to give you an idea of how polygons works, I've pulled up a few of the pages from the section on eight-sided projects. And you'll notice that we show the shapes using different widths of material. Well, what this allows you to do is to visualize what you want your finished frame to look like. And right here, by the way, you might notice I was talking about my friend Joe Spurlock. That's his shop buddy, Friday. Uh, Joe's had Friday for about five years. The squirrel loves root beer. Uh, I've got some pretty nice pictures in this book. And one of the things I want to point out is these pages were done on my inkjet and in the actual book. The pages are a lot more attractive. Now, you notice beside the frame that we also show you rings. Now, if you're a wood turner, you want to do segmented bowls. Uh, if you'd like to build a round frame, all the information is there. It shows you what your finished frame will look like. And the page to the right of that is where you're going to find your dimension information. What it does, it shows you according to the side length how wide the frame would be, how high the frame would be, uh, the maximum size of a ring if you're turning uh, into a wood turning project, how much material you need, and then it actually shows you the width of the material for your frame and also the width of the ring. Now, as we scroll to the right, you're also going to notice that we have the information for panels. Now, these also, it shows you where the pieces need to be cut. All the information's there. We're going to show you later on in the DVD uh, how you apply this information into building your projects. And one of the things I want to point out is polygons has all the information you need on 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 16 sided projects. One of the things that we're also trying to do in polygons is to emphasize how you can get creative as you build your different frames. Now, if you're working with an odd number of sides, five sides, seven sides, nine sides, whatever, if you try to get creative and change the length of one side, you're going to have to have three different lengths to get those projects to fit properly. And the mathematics can be an absolute nightmare. With even numbers, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 sites, we've included in the book these creative frame formulas and information. And what they do is they show you, according to the number of sites, in other words, on this page, we're dealing with six sites, we show you how you can fill a page, in other words, increase the size of the frame, so we're not losing any of the height or any of the width of the picture. In other words, the yellow area shows what we'd have to crop away. Uh, illustration A is an example. We're using four short sides and two long sides. Illustration B, we're using four long sides and two short sides in order to accomplish that. And down below, what you're going to find is your rabbit area dimensions for creative frames. Now, the rabbit dimension is what is dictated by the size of the picture. In other words, the recessed area that the picture sets into. And what we've done, we've included most popular sizes of pictures and then give you the rabbit information for that. Now, as we scroll to the right, you're going to notice on the page for octagonal frames, eight-sided frames, how we use three pieces on top, one length, same as the three on the bottom, two long sides. And then illustration B, we're actually using three different lengths. And again, your information and charts are already here. As we scroll further to the right on our 10 sides, you'll see a couple of the things we can do with that shape. And there, by the way, you notice my Yorkie Chewy trying to figure out what the heck that squirrel's doing in the book. And then as we go over to 12 sides, okay, you're going to notice some illustrations of what can be done with those. And that's my granddaughter, Victoria, checking that squirrel out. We also have the information in the book for 14 and 16 sides. I just didn't have the room to put all of those pages up here and show you here in the DVD. Now, as I said, it's, this is an illustration off of a frame side for an octagonal frame. And you notice it's the length here at the rabbit that would be the critical dimension. But for most of us, the outside length is the easiest one to work from because that way we don't have to interpret where the rabbit would be cut. And you notice on this illustration as an example, as we take our 
22 and a half degrees off of a square cut. What that leaves us is with a 67 and a half degree uh, resulting angle. Now, what we've done is we've actually formulated uh, charts that allow us to determine based on the angle we're working at and the width of the material, how we can convert the rabbit length into an outside length for all of the nine shapes that are shown in the book. And what's going to happen is this information is going to save you so much time and effort. And it really is going to make making these frames uh, pretty simple, even though most woodworkers would find them, if not at least very difficult, sometimes impossible. Verify what we're trying to get across here. I pulled this page from the creative eight-sided frame formula section. And I've put it beside the information in the eight-sided frame section. Now, let's say as an example, we want to do an octagonal frame very similar to illustration A for an eight and a half by 11 uh, picture. In the chart below the illustrations, you notice that on an eight and a half by 11, the red rabbits, in other words, the top three and bottom three, would be three and a half, and the blue rabbits would be six. Now, this gives us the rabbit length. As we pan to the right, you're going to notice in the eight-sided frame information, this is in the eight-sided section of the book, as we scroll across to the second page, you're going to see a chart called eight-sided frame added width and length. This is where we generated our formulas to give you the information according to how wide the stock is, how wide the rabbit is, how much to add to the rabbit length. In other words, let's say uh, you're making a frame using an inch and five-eighths wide molding. You have a quarter inch rabbit in the material. Now what this means is you would have an inch and three-eighths of that material outside the rabbit. If we come in, and all these charts, by the way, are formulated in sixteenths just to help you out. If we add an inch and three-eighths, an inch and six sixteenths to the width, we would automatically add an inch and one-eighth to the length. So what this tells us, where we had the rabbit length of three and a half, we add an inch and an eighth, we'd have four and five-eighths to six inches. For the blue one, we add an inch and an eighth, we have seven and one-eighth. This gives us the outside length. So we can use these numbers not only to get our final dimensions, but also to help determine how much material we need to make that frame to start with. That way we won't be wasting a lot of time, a lot of materials getting this frame built.